intraspace. Waikato Museum is a regional museum. It serves the Waikato. I'm employed as the curator of art now. That could be concept leading, that could be a whole number of things. But there is a quarter of the calendar dedicated to the visual arts. Uh, the rest are tangata whenua, social history and science. Now, you see the problem with this, for me as an artist who's completely about art, is that the art is people's place, which is I'm a complete 100% advocate for, but it's not necessarily the place that art happens like in a gallery space. Museum, gallery, not always holding hands. And um, as you see, we have a very full chock-a-block timetable. So this is just an old example. And so space is at a premium. It's very difficult to actually find space for contemporary art or experimental art to occur. So how much space do I really need? You might think, oh, well, just sort out the timetable, why don't you? But look at that. That's a little ant. That's from the Art Award. And I think we need a bit more space than that. But space, <laughs> space is what you make it. And you can, uh, like Jasmine suggests too, it's, um, it's kind of liminal. It's in between. Um, so why not use a gallery space? It's all about the money. <laughs> oh, yes. These financial considerations every curator has to consider and freight costs, insurance, uh, installation overheads, plinths, electricians, the list goes on. So, wherever there is a space, I'm going to find it within this space. Uh, you know, we can think about uh, ways in which we exhibit, and there are traditional ways, as we saw earlier, where it's all on the gallery wall, dirty bath water, it's just a line around the gallery or we can think about it in other ways. So I've considered intra, the word intra, it's within, intra space. So uh, besides that, in the theoretical sense, um, I decided to create this project, the intra space project, which uses the space theoretically within the museum. So that, that's not just the museum proper, but as a physical, as a theoretical place. Um, still. Accountability, I can't just go headlong into things and just do it wherever I want to, I have to ask for permissions. And there, as you see, conservator, technicians, security, all of those I have to take into consideration, even if there is no budget. <laughs> and how do we promote this? How do I promote this? There's a real exhibition happening in, under a stairwell somewhere, but how do we do it? Through YouTube, through social media sites. Social media sites, uh, well, love them or hate them, that it's a reality and it's a growing trend, although there is some evidence that it doesn't always work. But here we have um, a space. I'm just going to move on. I'm talking too much. Um, this is underneath the stairwell. This is one of my favourite spaces. It goes towards the workshop. And Sharam Entekabe is a famous German artist. Well, he's actually Iranian, but um, he agreed to show his work in this lowly space. The back uh, level of uh, level three stairwell goes up towards Ngapo Whenua and it starts at the Hamilton History Show. Uh, never a dull moment. And these are the works of Chris Krause, who's a famous New York writer, but she was born and bred in New Zealand. Um, as you can see, it's a typical space. Uh, this is another part of the corridor. Um, Klaus Felitz from Germany, uh, who's from France and Germany. And a lot of the words come in digital form, so I'm able to, we're able to reproduce them at very low cost, and I can install them. So I am the artist's proxy. And it's not always that easy. <laughs> uh, George Rump, this is uh, down going towards collection storage by the lifts, and there's a little image there. And as you can see, this is a little genius of a 16-year-old photographer. So it's also promoting emerging artists as well as international and experimental artists. Um, Cla uh, Florian Heinke, also from, uh, he's from Frankfurt. Uh, this was exhibited in the empty canvas restaurant windows. It's now covered over, but uh, as you can see, th this guy sent all of his stuff from Germany. So artists can be as participatory as they want to be. And uh, if, oh, Emmett Snake Beings, you must know who he is. Now this is our first of the CCTV footage performances where we gather the, the we get the performance uh, footage and it goes onto YouTube. And Abel has been assisting me with that. 
that's Emmett doing a little ritual at the back of the museum. <laughs> I think, yeah, he actually bowed to some of the people coming in, so it was quite hilarious. <laughs> hey, it's not moving. And in the lecture theatre um, foyer here, there's that window space, as you can see, and this is moth. Uh, this is a, a little uh, cardboard installation. So window spaces, anywhere there is space that is non-gallery, it's going to happen. This is the back stairwell leading to our staff room. So feel free to ask me if you want a tour at some stage, just not today. <laughs> uh, this is Lorraine Tauririwa, who's becoming a really big name in New York. Um, beautiful reproduction of her uh, watercolour works. This is outside by the car park. You may have seen them. Some kids think they're wanted posters, but they're not. <laughs> this, this is Fiona Jack's um, poster series of the port workers um, who were striking. And it was really poignant at the time to exhibit their work since they were still on strike. So it was really fortunate. Um, and these are other alternative spaces, as you can see on the back of, uh, at the top of uh, Arts Post. There goes Tamiiti's face. Regan Tamanui, who's a very famous, he, he's been subsumed by the Australian art game. Um, yeah, he's a graffiti artist, but he's also an artist in his own right. Yeah, these are spaces that I intend to use at some stage for somebody's work. And that's me. See? <laughs> Holding a sign, making sure that you know that it's uh, within spaces. And non-gallery space. This is my final um, slide. Anywhere that that's orange is where I'm going to exhibit works of experimental artists and art that pushes boundaries that I can't necessarily show here. Cheers. <laughs>